the analysis of your product, what it is, and what it does. In reality, every product you are given to sell is actually two products. One of them is the physical product, the steel, glass, paper or tobacco that the manufacturer has shaped into a particular pattern, of which he is justly proud. The other is the functional product, the product in action, the series of benefits that your product performs for your consumer, and on the basis of which he buys your product. Connect with me via WhatsApp, plus 234-703-247-4726, to get more interesting videos. Please, to support our ministry, remember to like the video, and also find it in your heart to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then, gently tap the bell to turn on the notification, so as not to miss out on the next videos. The physical product does not sell. People do not buy the steel in a car, the glass in a vase, the tobacco in a cigarette, or the paper in a book. The physical part of your product is of value only because it enables your product to do things for people. The important part of your product is what it does. The rest, the steel skeleton, the chrome or metal case that you actually deliver to your customer, is only your excuse for charging them your price. What they are really paying you for is what the product will do. No physical part of your product can ever become a headline. No one will buy the size of your client's plant, the weight of your client's steel, the care of your client's construction. All these facts can only be used, later on, to document and reinforce the primary performance that you promise your reader in your headline, in the following ways. By justifying your price. This is the common sense theory that the longer the car, the more tubes in the television set, the more stitches per inch in the suit, then the greater the number of dollars your product can command, if that product first delivers the performance that your prospect demands. By documenting the quality of your performance, tell your prospect the weight of steel in your car's door, and he's more likely to believe that your car will protect his life if he should have an accident on the highway. Tell your prospect the number of times your plant removes the impurities in your face cream, and she's more likely to believe that your cream will remove the impurities in her skin. By assuring your prospect that the performance will continue throughout the years, ceramic mufflers mean no repair bills for the life of your car. Chemically protected paper means you can hand your prize books down to your children. Quick frozen food means you can retain taste and vitamins for months after your purchase. By sharpening the reader's mental picture of that performance, the Rolls Royce must give you perfect riding silence because every metal part of the chassis is shielded from every other metal part by a protective coat of rubber. Helena Rubinstein's new face cream must make your skin look younger because it contains the placenta of living animals. And, above all, by giving your product's claim of performance, a fresh new basis for believability. This is the most important use of the physical product in fields where a new firm or product is attempting to invade an established mass instinct field. Others have made the same claim before. Your product, in order to pull sales away from them, must introduce a new mechanism that performs the claim, or a new quality that assures its performance, or a new freedom from old limitations that improves the performance. This is the point of difference, often conceived by the copywriter, and built by the manufacturer into the product at his recommendation. So much for the physical product. It is always subordinated to the functional product, the product in action, what the product does. It is the performance of your product, satisfying the mass desire of your market that provides the selling power of your ad. Your first task, then, in studying your product, is to list the number of different performances it contains, to group these performances against the mass desires that each of them satisfies, and then to feature the one performance that will harness the greatest sales power onto your product at that particular time. Take the automobile, for example. Every automobile offers its prospective owner several different and distinct sets of performances. It offers him transportation, the ability to carry himself, his family, his luggage, 
and perhaps tinned the case of station wagons, his pets and his furniture from place to place. It offers him dependability, the freedom from breakdown, stalling, poor performance, repair bills, embarrassment and inconvenience. It offers him economy, inexpensive transportation, savings in both gas and oil, freedom from repair bills, seen this time from the point of view of the pocketbook, durability high trade in value, low insurance cost. It offers him power, number of horses at his command, take off at the lights, acceleration on hills and in traffic, top speed, even if he never uses it, all adding up to a feeling of dominance on the highway. It offers him recognition, admiration, status, subtle and accepted bragging, envy, the feeling of having arrived, the ohs and ahs of his neighbors, the first ride, the very smell of a new car. It offers him value, the number of feet of steel he can command for the price, high trade in value over the years, the fact that the car can last for 100,000 miles, even if he can afford to trade it in every year. It offers him novelty, power steering five years ago, electric door locks today, three-tone paint jobs yesterday, iridescent paints now, the thrill of being the leader, the pace setter, the proven pioneer, and many more, some of them hidden, never admitted, discovered only recently by motivation research, dozens of different performances, built into the same product, each of them reaching out and tapping a different desire, a distinct public. And yet your ad can feature only one of these performances, can effectively tap only one mass desire at a time. Your headline is limited by physical space. You have only one glance of the reader's eye to stop him. He is preoccupied he is not looking for your product or your message. The span of his attention will admit only one thought to penetrate his indifference during that glance. If your first thought holds him, he will read the second. If the second holds him, he will read the third. And if the third thought holds him, he will probably read through your ad. Every product gives you dozens of keys. But only one will fit the lock. Your job is to find that one dominant performance squeeze every drop of power out of it in your presentation. And then convince your reader that that performance and that satisfaction can come only from your product. Stay tuned for the next part on the series. Part 4. Your Prospect's State of Awareness. How to Capitalize on It When You Write Your Headline. Bye for now.